This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be yet another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash discussion type video, and the card of today's topic is yet another new Link monster that has been spoiled for release in Link Frames pack number one. At this point, the set is becoming more and more infamous in the community as more and more Link-based goodies get thrown at us one after another, strictly to be the selling points of this set. And that's certainly not without good reason, honestly. I mean, they're trying to support these other decks and stuff, so I mean, I guess they can. But the card we're here to talk about today is the newest addition to the Mermel family and card pool, Mermel Abyssalacea, which in all honesty just looks like Abyss Trite got tired of not having legs and decided to do something about that situation. Which is, in fact, exactly what happens. This card's artwork and design are nearly identical between it and Abyss Trite, so you'd be pretty hard-pressed to not notice that they are, in fact, the same character, just with one possessing a humanoid form, rather than the other being a mermaid. Anyway, this card is a fairly generic Link 2 for the Mermaid Atlantean decks to make, as it only requires any two fish, sea serpent, and or aqua-type monsters for the summon, but not beasts, though. So, I guess you can just go stay over in your unwanted corner forever, Nimble Beaver, you can't make Totally Awesome, and you can't even make this, you worthless piece of shit. Shed a tear for the Angry Beaver. Anyway, it is obviously a water attribute monster, and it's a sea serpent type with 1600 attack points, further providing yet another mirroring of Mermel Abyss Trite in its overall card stats, and I can assure you that the similarities between the cards do not end there. Mermel Abyssalacea is a pretty stacked Link monster with three separate effects to her name. Or, I guess at this point it's just the normal amount of effects for every Link Vrains pack monster. I mean, honestly, almost all of the new Link supporters had at least two effects per card. This, this needs to stop at some point, I swear. But anyway, her first effect is a continuous effect of monsters this card points to gain 500 attack and defense. Ah yes, if there was ever, ever going to be a reason people still wanted to justify playing Mistar Boy, certainly it flew right out the window with this effect. While the attack gain isn't dispersed across the entire board, that hardly matters in most situations, as the Mermel deck is already fairly well comprised of heavy hitters and removal, and likely the only cards you cared about actually boosting were monsters in linked zones anyway, like Bahamut Sharks and Totally Awesomes, to give them more staying power overall. I feel like this effect wasn't actually on the card when it was first designed, but then Konami decided they needed to make sure Abyssalacea was above and beyond a better card than Mistar Boy so that everybody replaced it with this card and that there was no debate over which one you should play in Mermails, but that's just my quick two cents. I mean, this, that's just my opinion on that matter. But its other effects are, during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, add one Mermail monster from your deck to your hand. And its last effect is, if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster, or destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can send one water monster from your deck to the graveyard, then target one water monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense position. You can only use each of those effects of Mermel Abyssalacea once per turn. So, at first glance, these two effects don't really seem too powerful, honestly. An opponent's turn search for basically always Abyss Tius, and a revival effect when it dies, but only when it dies by your opponent's actions and your opponent's cards. Seems kind of restricted and seems kind of bland, right? But in reality, this card is actually really fucking good. If you've only quickly read its effects with a quick once over, you can just easily glance over the fact that its effect wordings apply the appropriate costs to trigger Atlantean effects. I know this firsthand as I've already talked to multiple people who missed that detail on the first reading. I have talked to multiple people that did not understand when they read this card once that it could trigger Atlanteans from your hand or your deck. And that plays a huge role in how this card can function, as yet another enabler of Mermail's going first strategy. On your opponent's turn, you can easily discard an Atlantean Heavy Infantry to search a Mermail card and then subsequently destroy a face-up card of your opponent's. This allows yet another defensive line of play for Mermails to have that supports the deck's ability to go first, outside of just making Totally Awesomes or Mermail Abyss Gaios, which is what the deck was limited to beforehand. Its revival effect is also very nifty as it can, like Neptabyss, trigger Atlanteans from your deck, all while reviving a water monster in defense mode. This can be used as a wall, this can be used as a further combo piece, regardless, it's just, it's, it's literally just an addition on top of being able to trigger Atlanteans from your deck. This means your opponent is going to have to be very careful in how they deal with this card, as anything that destroys it can cause them to lose yet another card to triggering a marksman or heavy infantry from the deck directly to destroy one of those cards. 
This effect is also not hard limited to Murmur monsters like Abyss revival effect was, and instead can revive any water monsters from the graveyard. While it can't revive Link monsters because those can't be in defense position, and it can't revive totally awesomes that were summoned off Bahamut Shark, it can revive any other water in your grave and or deck, as well as totally awesomes that were properly summoned via the regular XC summoning way. This once again gives a huge amount of value to the frog engine in the deck, as any natural toads you pump out are fair game to revive with this card if your opponent is forced to kill it. And that's going to put your opponent in a very, very hard position if they're having to deal with you adding back multiple cards with totally awesomes or are negating multiple cards. It's very interesting. But I'd like to point out how this last effect in particular is literally exactly like Abyss Trite's revival ability, again because it's an evolution of the exact same card, but it has been updated with four years worth of power creep to be brought up to modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards and was then restricted accordingly to make it less abusable. Good on you, Konami. I don't often praise you for good card design, but damn it, this one was a good one. Good fucking job. So why is this card good for Mermails? Why is this card important for Mermails? What makes this card so good at assisting the deck's going first game? Well, it assists the deck's ability to put out disruption for a reasonable cost when going first. This was only recently enabled by Totally Awesome around this time in 2016, but even then it's still been a slight bit of a struggle to do so even with Totally Awesome around. If you couldn't get the pieces to make a Totally Awesome, then you were basically passing your turn with some advantage gained, but no real way to interact with your opponent to stop them from killing you through your already weak setup. This card changes that, as a simple hand of Neptibus plus any water can end with Abyss Lacia on the board with a searched heavy infantry in your hand, and a searched Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi, also equipped to Abyss Celestia because it is a Mermel monster. It is a Mermel name. Now, Mizuchi isn't an ideal form of disruption, but it does still deal with a spell card played by the opponent, essentially taking away a card from them in most cases. And then the aforementioned interaction Heavy Infantry has with being discarded for disruption purposes can be used as a second but much more pinpointed and generic defensive line against an opponent's card. While this situation is fairly bland and generic, it helps paint the bigger picture quite well of what you're capable of doing when you had more combo pieces to work with. Maybe you had the ability to make a totally awesome alongside Abyss Lacia, or maybe drop a Mooling Glacia alongside Abyss Lacia to strip away two more cards from the opponent. These interactions start stacking up one on top of another, and start really pressuring your opponent to deal with this card as well as your other cards, but on a more reduced card resource pool. This only pans out better for you as the game progresses onward, and these are interactions you should be focusing on with a deck like Mermel. So while you may look at this card and think, uh, it's not too broken, it definitely doesn't stop the card from being a super valuable and super generic piece of the deck's disruption puzzle that is definitely something that Mermels have needed more of if they're going to try to transition into playing as a going first deck versus a going second deck. Suddenly, Mermels have the ability to go first more reliably than ever before because something as simple as summon Neptibus alone as your only starter or your only extender can be a way to put this card on the field as at least one disruption method for your opponent's turn. Mizuchi isn't amazing, but it's still parable with this card to essentially out a card your opponent has. Your opponent will lose a card by playing the spell to make Mizuchi fall off, and then Heavy Infantry assisting this card's search effect deals with a second card, so it's very good resource management for you to be able to invest Neptibus plus one water monster into the play, and then be able to set up further searching for next plays and deal with potentially two cards your opponent plays. Maybe I'm overselling this card a bit, I honestly don't know at this point. I do know that I have played Mermel for years through all of its forms and have had a front row seat to what has made its evolutions better and better upon itself than their previous versions. It's one of my favorite decks of all time that I've ever played, and it's always a backup plan constantly for me to play at any particular event if I'm not too happy with the deck choices that I have for that event. Its power level has always been just slightly above the top decks, no matter what happens and what changes in the format. It's, it's always been one of those decks that's incredibly strong and incredibly rogue and could always just come out of nowhere and top an event or do something like that. So I feel like this card is overall going to be that card that causes another new evolution of the Mermel deck by giving it more just, I guess, backbone overall. It gives the deck a way to continuously and easily put out a monster that not only facilitates you being able to go into totally awesome plays, 
but also can provide a form of disruption in itself, and that is something that Miss Starboy literally never provided. Now, this card's TCG name is not confirmed as Mermel Abyssalacia, but is rather a loose expected translation for what the card might be named, but I wouldn't be surprised if that ended up being its actual name since it does fall in line with the lore of this card. This card is based on the Roman goddess of salt water or the Roman goddess of the sea, Celestia, whom is the wife and queen of Neptune, aka Neptibis the Atlantean Prince. This falls in line with her Greek alternative mythology in which Amphitrite, aka Mermel Abyss Trite, is the wife of Poseidon, aka Mermel Abyss Gaios, and Mermel Abyss Gaios is quite clearly a grown-up uh, Neptibis the Atlantean prince, or a, basically an altered form, because they are wearing the same armor. One is just old, one is young. There's, there's many things that go on there, but overall, LORE! One of the coolest aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh that I enjoy, or maybe I'm just a filthy weeb? It's really anyone's guess at this point in juncture, <laughs> honestly. But I do really like the lore in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's one of the coolest things that I find about card design, is the lore that is tied to them. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you really liked this more structured and more composed card review type video, then definitely let me know in particular. I would love to know your opinions on it because it takes a lot more time to do, but if it's something that you guys want to see more of in the future, then it's definitely something that I could probably work on and work out. Because, I mean, shit, I want to improve the channel. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been making and, in particular, really want to see more videos like this one on the channel, then Patreon is the best way to support the channel and help me be able to improve quality, improve equipment, and stuff like that. While also getting access to rewards back for yourself, like entry into monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways or entry into my private Discord server to chat with me and others on a daily basis. So if you're interested in any of that, then definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description down below and check out the reward tiers. And any support you'd like to give the channel, you'd have my gratitude for in advance. So it helps out a ton, as I've said plenty of times in the past. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I would love, 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 love to know your thoughts on this format of card review that's more structured, more composed, uh, basically basically scripted, honestly. I went and put things down in detail of what I wanted to talk about, in what orders, and uh, went from there. So things are a little bit better. It takes a shit ton of time to edit, though, so keep that in mind. But other than that, <laughs> I'm going to end this video now. As always, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.